Hi everyone. So last time uh, in our sufficient statistic video, uh, we calculated the sufficient statistic based on the definition of the sufficient statistics. But it turns out that uh, finding su sufficient statistic based on the definition uh, will not be an easy task in uh, every situation because uh, to find the sufficient statistic based on the definition, we should uh, have an intuition that what will be our sufficient statistic is. But in most of the situations, uh, in advance, we, uh, we will not have any intuition that what will be our sufficient statistic. So, the alternating way to find the sufficient statistic and, and also the easiest way to find the sufficient statistic is based on the factorization theorem. So the factori uh, factorization theorem says that if we have a joint probability density function or the uh, joint probability mass function of like this, f of x uh, given theta of the sample x, then this t of x is a sufficient statistic for this unknown parameter theta if and only if there exists uh, two functions like this. The first function is g of t given theta and h of x. So, here you can see that the first function is depending on theta, but you can see that it is depending on theta only through this uh, value of t, where this t of x is our sufficient statistic. And here you can see that h of x is independent of theta. So, if we can write our probability density function, uh, our joint probability density function as product of these two functions, where the first function is depending on theta uh, true, uh, the sufficient statistic, and the second function is independent of theta. If this is the case, then this t of x will be our sufficient statistic. So, when you, are uh, when you are using the factorization theorem to uh, calculate the sufficient statistic, what we need to do is that first uh, we need to rewrite our function in a such a way that we will be able to find two functions like this. Okay? The, uh, we will uh, demonstrate this using an ex example. So, our first example is this. So, let us say we have n observations where these are uh, all n observations are independent and identically distributed, where uh, these random variables have a, normally, a normal distribution with mean mu and the variance of sigma square, where this sigma is a known value. So, here the only unknown parameter is our population mean, which is mu. So, the first step is uh, we need to write the joint probability density function. So, you can write the joint probability density function like this because these random variables are independent and identically distributed. So, next, if you consider this uh, element twice, you can see that the first component is independent of i. So, you can write it as 1 over 2 pi square to the power n, uh, n over 2. And we have this term uh, e to the power negative summation of x i minus mu to the power 2 divided by 2 sigma square. So, uh, after this, I am going to do a trick to find the sufficient statistic. So, what I am going to do is I am going to uh, add and subtract x bar. I am going to add and subtract x bar uh, to this exponent like this. I am going to subtract x bar and at and, the and same time I am going to add back this x bar like this. So, now you can see there are two components. The first component is this and the second component is this. So, if you consider those two separately then you can expand this using the uh, using the expansion of quadratic function. So, that means if you have something like this. you know how to expand this. So, you have to do the same thing to expand uh, this function. So, if you expand this, you will see that this the first term corresponding to the square term of this, where it is e to the power negative summation of x i minus x bar to the power 2 divided by 2 sigma square 
and the second term corresponding to the expansion the square term of this which is equal to e to the power negative n times x bar minus mu to the power 2 divided by 2 sigma square this n is here because you can see that this second term is independent of i so when you uh, sum n terms like like this then it uh, you will see the uh, you will have this n at the front of this x bar minus mu square and you will uh, you might wonder what happened to the uh, cross product term so if you expand the cross product term you will see that the, uh, that cross product term goes to zero so the only remaining terms of this expansion will be this uh, these three terms okay so after that uh, if you rewrite okay so if you rewrite the terms the first term we have 1 over 2 pi sigma square to the power n over 2 uh, uh, and we have e to the power summation of x i minus x bar square divide, uh, divided by 2 sigma square and we have this term which is e to the power negative x bar minus mu square divided by 2 sigma square. So when you consider these first two terms you will see that uh, those two terms are independent of mu. So that means this, uh, this, uh, the first two terms are like our h of x because those two terms are independent of mu and the second term you can see that it it has mu that means this term depends on mu and if you expand this like this term like this you will see that uh, this mu comes to the picture uh, with x only through this x bar you can see this mu and x comes to the picture only through this x bar because of that you can see that uh, this is like our g of tx given mu and here you can see that mu uh, our t of x is our x bar so based on the factorization theorem we can say that x bar is our sufficient statistic uh, for parameter mu because we can see that uh, we can write our probability density function as a product of two functions where one function is independent of mu and the other function is depending on mu um, through uh, the statistic x bar where x bar is our sufficient statistic. So that is uh, about an example of how to find a sufficient statistic for a normal distribution where the uh, sample variance is not. Next we are going to do another example and uh, now uh, we have n observations where these observations are uniform distributed between 0 and theta. So if you have something like this and if you write the joint probability density function it is like this because uh, the probability density function of a random variable which is uniform distributed is 1 over theta times we have this indicator function where xi is between 0 and theta. So when you expand or when you distribute this uh, product function to each and every term you will see that this will be equivalent to 1 over theta to the power n times indicator function of x of n given theta where this x of n is our maximum order statistic. So, we can see or we can rewrite this, exp uh, this expression like this 1 over theta to the power n times indicator function of x, uh, x of n given theta where this x of n our, is our maximum order statistic. So, uh, we wrote our probability or our joint probability density function as a product of two functions where the first function is independent of x and the second function is uh, depending on theta uh, where this uh, theta and x come into the picture only through uh, 
Bessavier statistic where Bessavier statistic is x of n. So in this case, our Bessavier statistic is the maximum mode statistic or x of n. So in our next video, we are planning to explain more videos uh, or more examples of uh, how to find Bessavier statistics based on the factorization theorem. Thank you.